Ladies and gentlemen, what a privilege to be with you tonight. Pastor Paul, Pastor Karen, you are not just anointed, powerful apostolic vessels of God. You are our friends and we enjoy you. Thank you for the honor of being in your house tonight. And I want to tell you, if you're in this area and you're looking for a good church where you're going to get five years of therapy in five minutes in the presence of God, this is the place. How many of you know, you, five minutes in the presence of God will deal with five years of therapy. There's nothing wrong with therapy, but I just like to shortcut it, praise God. We honor you. Your team is so excellent. We've been, we, we feel like royalty because of you, because of the way that you treat people and honor one another. We're so grateful to be here. I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's just such a tremendous place. You know, I think I, I was talking with Heather and our team. I think we're going to have to periodically come down here and just get a load of the Holy Ghost. I do. I, I man, I had the great privilege, like a dream come true, of doing a, a TV program with Pastor Bob Yandian today. And, and we, Pastor Bob is somebody, he's one of the speakers that really helped craft really my eschatology, a lot of my end time views, so many things. I remember going to university and I would put a earbud, string it through my sleeve and sit there like this and listen. And I would do it as the, the instructor was teaching things. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> and they'd just be like, okay, Joseph's really into this. But it was Pastor Bob breaking down things. And Pastor Bob, again, I honor you. You've made such an impact on my life and so many ones like us. Can we stretch our hands towards Pastor Bob in Jesus' name? For the Lord would say unto you, the latter house shall be greater than the former because sons and daughters will run with fire and a multiplication will come. And the multiplication of the voice at this time will have minimum effort and multiplication in reach, maximum reach. It's going to go. It's going to go, and you're going to find a resurgence of a mighty call and a arming and equipping that you have not sensed in a great season. And the Lord is going to bring another round to this, and I see it going with multiplication. Lord, we honor the man of God. We honor the equipper. We honor this general of the faith. We honor this general in teaching, and we speak increase and multiplication to him. The pastor's pastor, the influencer of influencers in Jesus' mighty name. And we speak blessing, longevity, and greatness of the voice of God around the world. Thank you, Father. I see your voice going to Asia. I see your voice going to the European nations. I see your voice going around the world world, even as the days get more challenging, I see your voice piercing the darkness, even through media. And another round of great significance. It's a wild thing. God's going to do more in a moment than he did in the entire journey up to that point. I bless you, man of God. We honor you and we celebrate the word of the Lord that you've given so many of us. Amen. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I am uh, I'm deciding if I'm just going to go on the flow here and get wild or if I'm going to try. <laughs> pastor Paul, you know, he's really an apostle in disguise trying to parade around as a pastor. That's why it's so awkward and supercharged in the anointing. He gets up and it's just like, you know, apostles in disguise. He's a reformer. <laughs> but, but God is going to touch people in a mighty way here tonight. I, I feel such a stirring and an unction from the spirit. Praise God. I'm going to try not to just turn into prophecy dispenser on the front side of this. Because God wants to help you. You know, there's a... Uh, I was at... Uh, I was at KCM this past January, and there was a, a major ministerial moment that happened in my life. And there's been a couple steps when Pastor Paul just prophesied over us, something took place in our life just now because it was a confirmation of a word God told me in a dream. You were prophesying to my dream. I looked at Heather and I thought, only God, only God. We were at uh, 
the ministers conference and I believe Brother Copeland was prophesying over Andrew Womack and Rick Renner and some of the people. And as he was doing this, I was sitting back by Kyle and we're just sitting there and suddenly out of Brother Copeland's like side of his being, a voice roared. He didn't say it audibly. It must've just been for me or people like me. And I'm standing there and I heard these words as he's preaching and prophesying, I heard the voice of God. And it was a calm moment. And I heard these words, come up here, come up higher, come up where I am, Joseph. I've never heard anything like that in my life. And it knocked me in my chair and Kyle is next to me and Kyle gets the, you know, the, I don't know, the shiver me Jesus moments, ooh, Mufasa, you know? (laughs) And I had that moment and the Lord began to minister to me and I don't even know what it meant. I said, Lord, yes, what are you saying to me? And it was so powerful and profound. But I believe it was a calling for many of us to go higher in the call and the glory of the Lord because deep darkness is covering the earth and darkness upon the people. But we're going to arise and shine in the middle of darkness. If you're looking for depression, this ain't the place. Pastor Paul began to prophesy and I had a a very vivid dream a few years back, several years back, where I was in a large outskirts of an arena. I'm walking through this place. People wanted to argue on the sidelines. All these things were happening and a little bit in the dream, I'm like, well, I'll give you an argument, let's go. And I was ushered away from that. Don't do that. Don't fight with spectators. Go over here. Ended up in this back room area. And somebody came and took a very small microphone away from me, handed me a bigger one, and they stood me up in front of a door. And there was a new form of prophetic worship that was there. Young worshipers, wild people, all of this. And I've not seen that come to pass yet until tonight. And I was standing there at the door and the Lord said, it's the new arena. And many of the things Pastor Paul said to me tonight, I'm gonna be prophesying and, you know, really praying through because I need to work through that process. I believe God has something very powerful for you tonight. Something magnificent that's gonna change and shock a generation. You're couriers and carriers of the glory of the Lord. We're gonna have people of God that love the word of God like never before. And they know the Holy Spirit like never before. A lot of people are saying this is the end, this is where it ends. And I've got to tell you, we have one more round. We've got another round yet. And God's gonna make a way for us for there seems to be no way. Lord, right now as your church and your body, we lift up our voice and we begin to speak to these mountains of deception mountains of challenge. We begin to speak over things like the World Economic Forum. We begin to speak over things that are trying to shut down the very liberties of the nations, this antichrist agenda that would rise. And we begin to pronounce judgment against it by the spirit of the Lord. We begin to announce Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. This world is not done yet. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is coming soon. We begin to speak this over all these wicked agendas in the United States of America, in Europe, in in Scandinavia, in Central and South America. We begin to release the power of God. Lord, we begin to lift up the word for one more round. One more round, God. One more round. One more round of revival. One more round of awakening. One more round of your moving. One more round in Jesus' name. We say no to the devil. We say no to the darkness. We come into agreement with your word, Lord. For I'm raising up clear-eyed, clear-minded prophets. I'm raising up clear-eyed, clear-minded apostles. Those who know their God, they don't want sensationalism. They want the truth. They want power. The Holy Ghost kind of power. 
the mighty Holy Ghost. I was standing in a Mario Murillo meeting and I was in Mario's meeting, people began to shout, just like tonight, began to shout. And in the middle of the shout and the roar of the Lord, I heard the whisper of God. And he said very clearly to me, this is not the end, not yet. It's not the end. And ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the place that the only answer the world has at this point is a move of God. That's it. There's nothing left. That's it. I almost like to say it this way. Has it come to this, ladies and gentlemen? Are we just going to simply have to believe God now? I guess we're going to have to believe God. Man, I have so many things I want to tell you tonight. I'm just kind of apprehended by the Holy Ghost here. There are apostles and prophets that will be raised up in this place. Teachers are coming forward. The opening of the eyes of the blind. There is coming a revival in the middle of perversion. And just as the eunuchs threw Jezebel out of the balcony, the Lord is going to bring an unconventional, offensive revival into the places of perversion and mutilation. And there will come a revival and they will cast out Jezebel and they will say, surely we've been lied to. We repent, we turn, and we come back to God. There will be a rebellion among the rebellious and the rebellion will be against the darkness. They'll do what they do best, rebel against the darkness. Some of your sons and daughters that have been caught up in the lie by the pervert mafia, they're going to be relinquished. They're going to be released from that prison. We are not going out with a whimper. We are not going out empty handed and at the end of the rope. We're not going out that way. Jesus is Lord. He needs the cooperation of his body. He needs the cooperation of his children, his family. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. As he is, so are we in this world. That means on a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is. There's come a right-sizing to the church. It started with the prophetic. I don't know if you've been paying attention to that. It started in 2020. Do you mind if I talk about something that's a little uncomfortable for people? Okay, I will. In 2020, there was a word that came out that a certain person would win the election. It rhymes with Donald Trump. And when that began to happen, a lot of people got into these echo chambers, began to go down that road. And listen to me, I want to break something down because there's been a lot of fire and crossfire between both sides of the aisle with this. And I believe the Lord wants to bring wholeness and healing to that so we can get back to business. Okay? In the Old Testament, there were two prophets. You might know their names. One was named Ezekiel. There was another prophet named Jeremiah. Both prophets had a prophetic word about a king named Zedekiah. And when you looked at these prophecies at face value, they contradicted one another. Now hang here with me for a second. Both prophets had said something that came off different. First of all, it was Ezekiel that prophesied over Zedekiah saying, 
Babylonians, the Babylon system will come in and they will conquer and they are going to come and see Zedekiah. But Zedekiah, the king, will not see Babylon. He will not see it. Then Jeremiah comes along. And he says, thine eyes shall behold the king of Babylon and you shall go to Babylon. This creates a little bit of an issue. To the point that the historian Josephus looked at it and said, this is so contradictory, I can't believe either of them. I throw them out. But Josephus should have kept reading just a little bit further. In 2 Kings chapter 25, verses 5 through 7, you recognize that what happened is Babylon came along, captured King Zedekiah, and the very first thing that happened is they ushered him before the king of Babylon, outside of Babylon, gouged his eyes out after he had seen him, and then ushered him into Babylon. So what happened? Both prophets were right. Now here's what I wanna say about this. There's a spiritual truth that is, is right, but there's an interpretation that we really need to get into to start understanding what the spirit is saying, but how does it apply to real world? And God wants to bring a right sizing to this so we can truly live, move, and have our being in him. Instead of dying on the hill of the Lord said, well, the Lord said, but your interpretation was off. Praise God. And in the New Testament, prophets can miss it. If a prophet misses it in the New Testament, well, they're a false prophet. No, they just missed it. Everybody okay? Praise God. And the Lord wants to begin to bring an accuracy and a right sizing and a clarity that's based on, get this, here's the H word that's coming to the prophetic. Humility. This H word called humility, where it becomes less about the person and more about Jesus because the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. It bears witness of Jesus. Every word you hear is not about pulling a bunny out of a hat and saying, look what I can do. Every word that you hear is about a testimony of Jesus that impacts lives, it foretells, it forewarns, it speaks about future things, but to the glory of Jesus. To the glory of Jesus. And when we go down this avenue, I believe the Lord had to allow a right sizing to come because it was turning into a mania. It was turning into a mania. I had actually people tell me because we came out in 2019 and look, I, I am not impressed with me. We came out in 2019 and the spirit of the Lord told me, Trump's not gonna win the way people think so. And I went live and I talked about it and I said, he will lose by a technology. And we lost followers by the droves. And people began to say, you gotta line up with this and you gotta line up with these other people. Listen to me, God is not an echo chamber. And when you have humility, you only say what you see. And that's the type of prophetic voices God's gonna to begin to raise up. He's gonna raise it up. And the real is coming. The real is coming. Less weird, more horsepower. Praise God. So I began to hear this and, and I'm gonna draw something on the board very quickly for us tonight, if that's all right. Just very quickly. And I wanna break this down for you and this is gonna help you. And then we're gonna get into some ministry. Because I believe God's gonna to touch people in this place. We didn't get all dressed up for nothing. I believe many times when you get into this place of hearing God. There are some warriors in this room. I mean, there's some like, I'm gonna find some of you. There's some hidden warriors in here. 
I'm telling you, there are hidden warriors. There's some burnt stones in this room. Some of you have been waiting for something that's about to break loose and be a part of it. Say, I want in. Well, praise God, look no further. The Holy Ghost, is he's more about it than you are. God wants revival more than you do. Let's, let's go here. Let's look at this. Okay, let me, let me just draw this. Let's say this is like flames, okay? These are flames of fire, okay? Let's say this is a event in the spirit. You're seeing an event in the spirit. You're looking at something. Let's say this represents uh, something that you, you know, see, okay? This is like a vision from God, or it's his voice, okay? It's a vision. It's a experience, Okay, this is really important. People begin to encounter these things and or they have a dream or they experience the presence of God. Tonight, I experience the presence of God. There's something about prophetic people that line up with apostolic people. Pastor Bob Yandian is a teacher's teacher, but he also has an apostolic flow to him and that's why so many people hear his word. I just, I'm a magnet to apostolic people, whether they know it or don't know it. I just find myself standing with them. I'm like, how you doing? And it's always like, I like you. And they're like, I like you too. Let's get coffee. But what happens is this, is that then we go through a process and this is where we begin to have issues. You know, people, they perceive an event, right? They perceive it with their own process, how they see what the spirit is doing. They might sense something that's happening, right? We'll just draw a little squiggly line here for the sense. They might hear something magnificent, They might hear it and say, my goodness, something's going on. But the issue at hand is when we have an encounter with the Lord, everybody processes things different, and we end up in a place where you go through a a grid. And this grid is built with all of our senses, but then it's also built with what we would consider a quadrilateral. Let me draw this really quick for you. Based on scripture, okay, tradition, um, experiences, our rationality, and this is something John Wesley said made up the life of the believer. Traditions, scripture, experiences, and rationality. When you go through this whole picture, what you begin to encounter is what we call our shaping filter. Okay? We begin to say, this is our shaping filter. This is why we believe what we believe. And many people, when they get born again, they say, I believe what I believe because of the word. Actually, most of the time, we believe what we believe because whoever brought us to the kingdom, we adopt their belief system. So we really are influenced by their tradition. Right? We saw it's based on scripture. Well, actually, it's influenced by tradition. So whenever you have an experience that kind of counters the tradition, many people do this. They're like, no, thank you. Now, it better be right with the word. If it's wrong with the word, I don't care what your experience is. Park it, Skippy. Amen? So we look at this kind of stuff, so we got to go through this. But our shaping filter is how people begin to interpret God. They interpret events. They interpret revival. They look at it. And this is oftentimes why different moves of God will persecute new moves of God or judge what's happening in a new move of God through their own shaping filter from the past. Okay? So we get into this type of place and we start to recognize, my goodness, there's so much that's, that's happening. When you get into the next phase of this, then you recognize there's another layer and this is built on the nine, the seven, and the five. And this is really the manifestational gifts, the, the motivational gifts, and the fivefold ministry, the 21 gifts. You begin to go into a whole nother place. And you say, my goodness, so not only do I have a shaping filter, now whatever your persuasion is in your place in the body influences this also. And then you add prophetic to it. Now you've got, you know, Roe, you've got Navi, you've got Chesa, 
And you got chose, and I'm not going to go way into this, but I'm just going to say it really quick. These four types of seeing or experiencing prophetic things, this one's a visionary, this is a bubbling up teacher, this one here is word of knowledge, this one here sees the future. And what we've got to do is begin to right-size what God's saying, because really this is revelation, interpretation, and here's our application. You could even begin to say this is spirit, soul, and body, where the rubber meets the road. And what we've got to do is get into a place where the Lord is saying, you've got to start to be led by my spirit and go through what I'm calling you to do and start to hear God based on what the spirit's truly saying. So how do you deal with some of these things? Well, the spirit is not some goofy experience, right? Many people say the spirit is, oh, the Mufasa. That's the spirit, ooh, say it again. Holy Ghost, Mufasa, right? Look, I love horsepower, we had it tonight. But people are just like, mm, Mufasa, right? The spirit is John 6, 63. It's, it's John. 663, my words are spirit. The soulish arena is a whole nother animal that we gotta bring into order and that comes through Hebrews, just so we're clear here, 514. The soulish arena, this interpretation area of our shaping filter is where you take the word of God and you take your five senses and exercise them, discipline them to discern between good and evil. That means you take all of your spectrum of emotions and feelings and sensory issues in the natural and you discipline it with the word of God, which is a spiritual walk. And then you add hot sauce like praying in tongues, you add hot sauce with the Holy Ghost, you begin to speak in the spirit, and I'll tell you what, you'll begin to get the right flow here going on. And then the natural is just pure discipline. That's pure discipline. And how you begin to bring things to other people is important. This actually is Romans chapter 12, verse one. I'll leave you with that part here on this. Romans 12, one, you become a living sacrifice. Right? This is what we gotta become. When you're looking at this, this is how you hear God. This is how you hear God with accuracy and you get into a place of really knowing what God's called you to do and you won't be disappointed because you're gonna start to really look at things with a more accurate understanding. This is some of the things that are missing in the prophetic. This is some of the things that are missing in the word and spirit movement because the next move of God is a word and spirit movement. The two will come together. They're coming together. And both sides of the aisle are gonna to have to calm down and cooperate. If it's too small, men fight. If it's big enough, they unite. And the world that's about to go into darkness is a pretty big project. I think we should unite. I think we should unite the clans. Hallelujah. And we're never gonna get along with everybody all about doctrine, but I'll tell you what, you know, the, the devil, he couldn't beat the church, right? He couldn't beat the church in the book of Acts. He couldn't beat the new church. So he did the next best thing. He joined it. And he denominized the nation. He began to say, well, we dunk, we sprinkle, we do this, we do that. We're right, you're wrong. And there's places for that. But I got to tell you, God is calling us to unite. And I believe God is calling people into a place of contending for their children. There's a spirit of passivity that's coming on the body right now. And it's trying to emasculate men. And again, I talk about this, but it's not about men that need to be more burly and walk around with an ax and sing, you know, Old Spice commercials or whatever, right? <laughs> no, God is calling men to stand up and lead. And all he needs from you is your yes. Just your yes. You might not even be the most manly man around, you know? <laughs> what is that old red green thing? If she doesn't find you handsome, at least she'll find you handy. Okay, whatever. But we're coming into a place, 
We're coming into a place where God is wanting people to live, move, and have their being, begin to step into everything that the Lord has purposed for them. There's a new and a living way that God is always had here. It's just being revealed again at a higher level. Because ladies and gentlemen, we stand now or we lose it all. That's where we are. I'm not afraid, not even a little bit. I'm encouraged. If this world gets darker, praise God, the church is just gonna keep going. If America craters, the church is gonna keep going. God is not American, but I am, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Zido <laughs> rabadere. There's gonna be such surprises that God begins to bring to us. The word of the Lord is here. We're coming into another phase, another time of strengthening, another time of equipping, another time of opening the door, another time of wealth transfer, and that has been taught with such a twist on it. It needs to be accurate. God is providing for those that are in the right place at the right time, doing what they're supposed to be doing, and there is provision there. I'm telling you, we're going to get to, to heaven, and we're going to know what the Lord has really called us to do. Dreamt I went to heaven, you were there with me, right? Too much? <laughs> I'm telling you, there's coming a, a miracle anointing that God's calling us to live in and walk in. And a lot of us are going to get there, and, and <laughs> it's like that old Ray Bolt song, right? We're going to get there. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed, right? But, but, <laughs> But the truth is, is until we really get active with what God's called us to do, we're going to get there and some people be like, you know, you should have given more. Yeah. You should have emptied your pocket. Yeah. Too much. Okay. <laughs> Dreamt I went to heaven. He was disappointed with me. I'm just kidding. No, God wants, God is not, God loves you. Praise God. Was that too much? Was it too soon though? Everybody okay? All right. The Lord wants you to rise in this hour and I feel an unction by the spirit of God. I really do. I believe God's going to break some of you out of apathy. I sense this also. Some of you are stuck in obligated relationships and I'm not talking about marriage here. Okay. I'm talking about, obli let's be clear. Let's make sure we're clear. People are like, praise God. You know what the prophet said? I'm out. Deliver me. Yeah, going to get me a new spouse. That's, I bind that demon. Amen. <laughs> no, but there's obligation in some relationships that have a controlling avenue in your life, then God wants that broken. Some of you are addicted to people and you need to stop. He's breaking you out. There's revelatory things that the Lord is wanting to give to his people and that's why the numbing of the culture is upon us. Trying to steal our children. I'm so grateful tonight that my team is here. This is um, wonderful people. This is Kathy Ganson. Kathy, can you stand up for the call? I just want to introduce you guys. This is Kathy. <laughs> Kathy handles our partner relations and calls people. This is Mary Ercoli, one of my senior editor, actually. She's amazing. She's awesome. This is Holly Eide. Holly is Heather's sister. And she's our executive director. This is our daughter, Allison. Allison! She's awesome. And of course, uh, Jason Chandler's here somewhere. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I couldn't see him. <laughs> it was Jason. And then Elijah, where are you at? Where's Elijah? Is Elijah in the room? He's probably taking care of something. Elijah's with me every day doing media, and he's with me. We get up at 4 in the morning, and we go live every single day. It's awesome. And Elijah's right there with me. Elijah actually comes from Rick Renner's church. He, uh, he was... Uh, 
you know, dedicated as a child and all that. But these are just a, a sampling of our team, and there's about 25 of us, and we're believing to really bring change through media and bring change to the culture and bring change. And I feel such an anointing with the Bradys. Man. Now, here's what is happening tonight. There's a number of people that you've been through a lot. You've been through some wars, some battles. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, it's time to give up to go up. It's time to let go. It's time to move forward because God needs you. He needs you. He needs you to engage. He needs you to come forward. I see strength beginning to rise on people. Some of the burnt stones that we talk about are going to stand up and you're going to begin to come out of darkness. Some of the silliness of all the things we've all encountered is going to go to the wayside and we're going to get very focused on results for the kingdom and results in our life with Jesus. Man, I sense that tonight. You know, some nights we could just go straight into heavy teaching. Other nights we start ministering. I feel the spirit of ministry coming on for people. Woman of God, I honor you. The level of intercession and the way you've held ground, I just begin to speak blessing over you in Jesus' name. Even in your body, even in the strength of God. Oh. For the Lord would say unto you, not many days from now, I will visit you again. And in the visitation will come transformation and will come an open way. For I know you. We've walked together a long time. And my spirit is so pleased. I see a legacy transfer and an anointing that begins to build and a flaming torch among the sheaves begins to rise. And the Lord says, the seeds sown will multiply at this time. I speak life over you. I speak blessing over you. There's a mighty anointing that you carry and a mighty anointing you are acquainted with. And the Lord is saying, speak to the gates, speak to the walls, speak to these things, for surely it shall happen. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Can we stretch our hands towards this matriarch of the faith? I begin to speak increase and abundance and favor and the knowing of God. And the Lord says, I know you. I know you. And you know me. I hear those words. And God is making a great way at this time. It's a transitional time. It's a transitional time. Your hour is filled with significance. And Lord, I bless the woman of God again. Thank you, Jesus, for generational breakthrough. And thank you, Jesus, for generational blessing. For I have opened a door that no man can shut, and the enemy tried to shut it. And I say unto you, it shall not be so, but the door is open. There is a generational, it's like a skipping happened, and now it comes. It skipped one, and it lands on another, and the strength of God will multiply at this time now. At this time, a hundred times as much. It begins again. Woman of God, you cannot bury seed, especially not with prayer. It comes up always. You're awesome. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus is good. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to start seeing, I like that shirt. I live in Goshen. Come on. Praise God. It might be dark in Egypt, but it's light in Goshen. You know, the enemy is trying to cripple us financially, trying to cripple us with all these other things. But I just got to tell you, that's not going to happen. It is not going to go that way. I believe God is bringing hope. He needs cooperation. That's why places like this are so vital. 
places like Millennial Church are so vital. You're going to begin to see hubs of safe spaces for the Holy Spirit burst forth all over the country, all over the world. And the institution, which I bless the institution, but the established institutions, which some are wonderful and some are challenging. Some took a revelation and institutionalized a revelation, but the Lord is breathing even on them now. And there will come the breath of God on the institutions that breathe life into them and they will not persecute. Because listen, whatever the institution typically can't control, it has to persecute or kill. But the Lord is saying that he's going to begin to bring awakening even to institutions, even to the gatekeepers. There are gatekeepers you do not know about that will step into institutions of the church, of the government. And I hear these words, even over the voting scenario. People have thought because the border has been open. Because the border has been open, it will be an onslaught of loss. But I hear the Lord saying they've not considered who I've brought in here. We need to pray because there's a lot of people with good values also that have come here. And this thing could get turned on its head with an upset. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Yes, Lord. I'm going to say this, there's a few of you in here. There are people that have done ministry a long time. You gotten tired. You kind of parked some things. You went to the wayside. You are what I call a burnt stone. You've seen too much. You've been around too much. You've watched things come and go. And because of that, you've had to park some things for your own heart's sake. And the Lord is saying, that's over. And it's a matter of coming back into the engagement of what God's calling you to do. If you don't know what to do, you need to engage in the Holy Spirit. Man, I'm just gonna minister a little bit. When you minister with Pastor Paul Brady, you gotta buckle your seatbelt. This man steps up and heaven opens up. It's like, why open the door to the dam when you could just dynamite the whole thing? (laughs) The heavens are roaring, the entire dam has exploded, and he's like, Joseph, come. (laughs) It is awesome. If you can't minister in a place like this, you need to get saved. Man of God, there's going to be a double coming to your ministry and a double to the calling, and God's going to begin to amplify and double it because of faithfulness, because of what he's called you to do. There's a doubling coming. In 24, when people begin to panic and freak out, there's going to be a doubling that comes. And the Lord's going to make a way and a living way. And the Lord's saying unto you, I called you. I called you. It wasn't your idea. It was my idea. And life will begin to multiply. You're going to outgrow the yoke in two areas in 24. And victory will begin to merge. Thank you, Jesus. And a voice who left will return and there will be a blessing in it. And God's hand of favor will open those double doors. And it shall be well. I bless you, man of God. It's good to see you. Is it okay if I wander around minister for a moment? I feel strength. Sir, you love the Lord. There's a spirit of might on you a spirit of evangelism, and then business. 
I see this ability to unite with what God's called you to do at a greater capacity. You've been on assignment for a long time. And the assignment will get more focused and more serious. And I see a woman figure that stood in the way of a destiny that God had for you. And God is opening up an absolute deliverance narrative and complete and total breakthrough. Woman of God, I speak life over you in Jesus' name. For I even look into the very essence of your, your physical, like your, your mind, your inner person. There's anatomy things God is fixing right now. I speak to it. It's like that word energeo, energeia in Jesus' name. I speak strength and energy into your very vessel right now in the name of the Lord, because intercession comes on you and a breaking through and a pushing through the veil is upon your life and the light will begin to shine brightly. Thank you, Father. I see two steps, then I see land. And I see this stepping into territory that truly belongs to you. And it was like a father's father thing. And God's going to step you all the way into what belongs to you now. I see that beginning to happen. The Lord's arm is not short. I bless you, sir. There's been a, um, an issue as I'm looking at you that really had to be resolved and fixed. And you've been grappling with it. And the Lord is saying, let go now and I will absolutely solve it, and I will start again. I'm just gonna start again, and that needs to be put over here, and it's gonna be well. You're welcome, sir. I honor you and I bless you. Jesus is, thank you, sir. You're an intense man, I like you. <laughs> he is too. Shorabakite. Praise God. Shout out, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He is, man. People have asked me in meetings before, Joseph, do you see sin sometimes when you're ministering? And the answer is sometimes. And they say, well, why don't you, uh, why don't you call that out? Give it a good call out. And I learned this even from my mentor. And we would say, well, it's a good idea. Let's start with you. And people get quieter. Or some crazy people are like, go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I sense something in the spirit here as well today. And I'm going to say this, Pastor Paul. There is a spirit in this town where there's, they're trying to engage and release like a mysticism or a spiritualism or like a witchcraft. And this place particularly is crushing that. It is, it is crushing that. I can feel it. It's a strange thing. I don't always feel this stuff, but sometimes I'm in meetings and I begin to feel the pressure of that. I begin to feel that people are saying, man, uh, you know, and it's upsetting to the darkness, but the darkness is getting slapped around right now. It doesn't know up from down. There is a roar in this place. Places like this will open heaven and prophets will come in and tell you what it looks like. This is not church as usual. Ira na 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 ma si da ya na 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 ma na ha 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 ha
Yira da 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 ba sa da 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 ba di a da da ba ji da 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 ma. Yira da da ba si ya. Ra ba shi da 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 ba shukro. Be ra ba shi da ra ma na na. E na 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 ma shi da 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 ba da da na na ma na. Yira na ni a na na ma sho na 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 ma. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha! He na ma kare ya da da man. He na ma shuru da da di da da baron. Ro da 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 ba shi da di ra. He na ma shi di ya da da ba. La da na na ma si ne ya na na. Yeah, come on, let that rise. Come on. He na na ma shi da ro da 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 ba he de ba de da da da. Ho da 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 he a la ba shu ra ma na na ma na na he na ma na na ma na ye ne a na na mo ro ba shu ra da 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 la ba si ro da da ye. Waymaker, waymaker, la 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 la. She di la 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 so. Di na na ma she di la 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 ba si di la la la. He la 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 ba sho ra ba da ba she gra la 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 mon. He na ma na na ma sho. Let it flow. Come on, come on. He la la ba si di la 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 ba. Hey, 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 come on, Arabasi, Arabasho, Rodororo, Arabasha, Arabare, Arabasi, Arabasha, Arabada, Arabasho, Hey, Allah, Allah, Arabasha. Oh, the Holy Ghost wants to be heard. The Holy Ghost wants to be heard. He wants to roar through you. He wants to roar through you. Yeah. Shout about the Kereba show. La 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 ba si la 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 ba shi la la no. Come on. Let it rise. Let it rise. She did it, la 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 ba sho, la 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 ba she, la 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 ba so. Ne na ma sha, na 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 ma so. I will do a work in your day. You would not believe it if it was told to you. She da ba ro do ga she. I am rescuing you. I am rescuing you. I am rescuing you. I am rescuing your children. I am rescuing this nation. I am rescuing you. I am rescuing you. The rescue. The rescue. The rescue. Yeah. Shira da da ba so ra ba da da ba de. My rescue. My rescue. My rescue. The rescue of the Lord, the rescue of the Lord. She da 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 ba so. Some of you are going to start to sense things lifting off your life right now. It's lifting off your life. Oh, don't stop! Don't stop! It's beginning to lift off your life right now. She da 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 ba da 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 ba da da. Le da 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 ba so da da da. Oh, you're going to call those things that be not as though they were. That be not as though they were, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's healing beginning to happen. Healing's beginning to happen right now in your body. Cancer's falling out. Cancer's going out. Cancer is leaving you. Cancer doesn't stand a chance. I see cancer being diminished, dissolving, and leaving. Cancer's going right now. Cancer, yeah, you're gone. Hey. 
Oh, that's it. We're pressing in. God's about to release it in the house. Things are being resolved and solved in your life right now. There's a solving of enigmas right now. The enigmas are getting solved right now. Listen to me, there's a changing of the guard happening. There's a changing of the guard happening. There's a very prophetic moment happening. God is changing the guard in Tulsa. <laughs> For the oaks are leaving, says the Lord. And the days of the united front is here. For I'm raising up clear-eyed, clear-minded warriors of prayer. It shall not be by might, it is not by power. It's by my spirit. And the changing of the guard is here. Hear these words. For I say unto you, the changing of the guard is here. I'm removing the former things and bringing upon the fresh wind of the spirit. Man's wisdom cannot win this. I need you to step in with me again. We're gonna to begin to step in again. For there's an open place here. This is the pool of Bethesda. The waters are stirring, Chris. She don't know no no. Oh, I need you to go in with your heart now. Healing is here. The blessing is here. The spirit of might, wisdom, and revelation. There will come now times of extended intercession and glory basking that will fight battles on your behalf. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, my generals, many of them, for they have already gone on. And I am now calling to the north, the south, the east and the west. And I'm raising up a new warrior and they carry the face of the lion and the heart of David. Church, hear me, the Lord is calling you to a time of extended intercession and a time of prayer, a time of consecration, a time of celebration, a time of knowing God in the hour of visitation. For I will begin to visit Tulsa, says the Lord, it will be beyond the days of old. It will be beyond the former works. For I begin again with this town. It will be a beacon and the oaks have lived left. The oaks are leaving and the united front is coming. The merging has already begun. And I hear these words tonight, that as the nations rage and these things begin to plot their vanity, 
The Lord is saying, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. For I laugh, says the Spirit. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. In the face of darkness, in the face of evil, in the face of murder, in the face of mutilation, for I say unto you, light will shine again. Go with me, come on. Shiro shiro no 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 This is a thin place. It is a portal of glory here. Shiro Everything you need is right in front of you right now. It's already here. It's already here. Reach out and partake of it. Shira basikilata. There's a roar coming in the spirit. There's a holy roar coming against the darkness. We're putting the kingdom of darkness on notice. There's a roar coming in 24. And the roar will come in 24. And the roar will come in 24. And the roar will come. It is in the spirit, says the Lord, and it will manifest into the natural. Do not believe what your eyes see. Believe what you hear in the spirit. For my roar is coming. My roar is coming. It is my roar in 24. It is my roar. Oh, I come through you with a roar. It is my roar. The roar. The roar of the Lord. The roar. Yeah, come on the roar. The roar of the Lord. It's the roar of the Lord. We put darkness on notice. The roar of the Lord. It's the roar in 24. The roar, yeah. The roar, the roar, the roar of the Lord. It's the roar, the holy roar. The roar, the roar, the roar. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Come on. Yeah. Shobra Bakishibede. There it is. Come on. There it is. Come on. Yeah. There it is. Come on. The roar of the Lord. The roar of the Lord. Come on, don't let up, don't let up, come on. The roar of the Lord, the roar of the Lord. It's a holy roar, a holy roar. The holy roar. I'm coming to rescue you. I'm coming to rescue you. My rescue, it's my rescue, the roar. Come on, continue, 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 the roar of the Lord. Give them back! Give them back! Give them back! Give our nation back! 
Unhand our nation. The roar of the Lord. Let him roar through you. Come on. Yeah. Every family, every family, everything the enemy has stolen, the loss of life, stolen inheritances in the spirit, the greatness of this land and the land of other nations, the inheritances, the things that were stolen, I hear the Spirit saying, I am not pleased with this. The Lord will come and he's coming with vengeance against the enemies. He's a holy God, a a holy God. He's going to make a way in this nation and when justice begins to be poured out and it is coming, justice shall come and you will outrun your enemy in the rain. For the roar, for the roar, for the roar of the Lord. It's the roar of the Lord, a holy roar. We're gonna terrorize the darkness. A holy roar. Change our White House, God. Change the nations, oh God. A holy roar. A holy roar. Let it rise. Come on, let it rise. begins now. It begins in your home. It's beginning in your life. The spirit of prophecy and ASAP is in the house and God will begin to break, break loose upon us. Pastor Paul, would you stand by me for a moment? Please come by me. Oh, oh. There are mantles beginning to rise up. 
Pastor Paul, I think that you're going to begin to open. Oh, oh, For I'm raising up a general of intercession. And the general of intercession. And we will speak grace, grace to it. And many will see and many will fear. And many will put their trust in the Lord. Come on, let it rise. Let intercession rise. There is a new work beginning in this town. God is beginning a brand new thing. The power of God, the word of the testimony. I've called you an apostle of intercession. I've called you an apostle to open the gates. Are you not a sent one? You're a sent one. For I've anointed you. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy to the dry bones. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, Jesus. For I say unto you, it is not by might. It is not by power, but it is by my spirit. The restoration has begun. People of God begin to cry out, come on. Begin to intercede. It begins with Tulsa. It begins with Tulsa. It begins with Tulsa. It begins with this place. It begins with Tulsa. It begins with this place. Ah! Yeah! Jesus! up we're gonna take this up three things the restoration of deliverance 
travail and rejoicing. Three things that the enemy tried to rob the church, but I'm telling you, they're coming back and they're coming back with power, pure power. I'm talking about pure power. I'm telling you, we're going to see deliverances like we never thought. I'm telling you, we're going to see the prayer of travail. Come and I'm summon a kanezai and see para sola mahataya. And I'm telling you, you're going to see a joy come back in the church. And we release a spirit of joy tonight in the name of Jesus. And his presence is fullness of joy. So come on, let's lift up a shout of praise tonight. Shout! Come on, there's a sound. There's a sound. There's a sound. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. beginning to open up a brand new movement. And look, it's it just is. the kingdom. It's just his kingdom. It's normal. It's normal. But he's opening it up to our eyes. And it's beginning to happen here in Tulsa. 
this is not common and revival's gonna break out in the land. This is an apostolic move of God. It is. And it's tearing heaven open right now, revealing the Lord in this place. And many of you are gonna find you're different. You're gonna go home and it's like you're gonna have a new set of clothes in the closet. You'll reach for the old ones and new ones will come out. That's the word. You're being changed. That's the word. Equipped. A new set of garments for 24. And it's just the beginning. And many of you will see a fresh strength begin to operate within you. Because over this last period of time, it seemed to be that you were, seemed to be like it was, I'm getting tired, I'm getting tired. But there's a freshness of what the Spirit is doing is about to wax strong within you. And just like what you heard tonight, it's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit. And there's a strength that is coming. I want you to lift your hands and receive this right now. There's a fresh strength that is working. A fresh strength. A fresh strength. A fresh strength. It will be new. It will be noticeable. It's like your prayer lives will take on a different vigor. It's like some people's prayer lives had come to a place where it was like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, oh, oh. But there is like a release. There is a freshness that is coming, a freshness that is coming, and a kofrani in and I saw something tonight in the word church. I never ever saw it before. H U R. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying to me, there is a strength. Battles were waning, but I am causing something to happen in this time that a strength is coming to hold the church strong. It's you are her. In the time Sakofan Brancus, in Del Mi Falailfal Gavanzolo Porpa, in Del Mini Sola Parfing Casilba, Taloyos Parmatuf. God is seeing to it that the battle will rage and will rage, and there will be no defeat. There will be the victims, victory after victory after victory after victory after victory after victory after victory. I only saw this one other time. When I saw the word change, I saw the first letter C, I saw the last letter E, and I saw within the word change, the word hang. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he says, Paul, the issue is with the church is that she needs to hang in there through the process of change. And that in the English language, hang was put in there in the word change for the reason of that you have to stay with it. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you gotta stay with it. But I saw in the word church tonight, this was the only one other time that I saw this, must be because Joseph is here and the gift is here. I saw her and it was the strength. And the Lord has been speaking to me for months now regarding reinforcements, regarding the praying for the ministers, regarding the stepping up of prayer for the ministers. And you've heard me all pray about it. You've heard me all talk about it. And there was a cry that was coming out of my spirit we must pray for the ministers pray for me and I saw it like I never saw it the apostle Paul how he uh, just cried out for the people to pray for him just lift your hands to heaven right now and also there is a strength that is coming and there is a strength that is coming for you to pray for leaders and for the leaders, there is a strength that is coming of prayer to pray for you. And we even declare this over Z Ministries tonight in the name of Jesus, that an army of intercessors are getting around them and locking arms with them in the name of Jesus. Come on, help me pray this right now. Because this cannot be done without the prayer. Whew. 
And so, Father, tonight we surround them in the name of Jesus. We call forth the prayers. We call forth the selfless in the name of Jesus, the selfless and the God-seeking in the name of Jesus. Those, Father, in Dom Siaka, Voloma, and Zila Paprapadaska that do not want to build their own, but, Father God, will come and they will build, Father God, and help to build, and they will be builders of prayer, prayer, prayers that will build, prayers that will build, not looking for titles, not looking for offices, not looking for any, anything other than to pray out, to lock in, to interlock, to become that part in the name of Jesus, to go forward, to go beyond, and to pull that which is ahead into the now, in the name of Jesus, and tonight, Father, we stand with them in Jesus' name, and do pray us to Kafaya in Zila Paprana Sakalaya in Doskin in Doskin in Doskin a Kafainsa in Dora Ford. Now grab the hand of the person beside you right now. Reach across the aisles. This is not a divide. Reach across the aisles. Pray in the spirit. Come on, we're nearly finished. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray over this couple. In the name of Jesus. In Dafalan Zala Paparne. In Zila Papal Jivenkalansha. In Dilzo Portai. Banasurda. Everything that stands against you, we bring it to naught in the name of Jesus. We sever that spirit of witchcraft that it came to bind you, to bind your feet, to try and hit your name before God would ever raise it. But it can't do it. We shut it down. We call you loosed, 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 loosed. Come on, everybody, loosed. Pray a backbone of steel, a backbone of steel, a backbone of steel, a backbone of steel, a backbone of steel. let him move let him move we work hard for a spirit like this come on receive a spirit of prayer tonight come on receive a spirit of prayer tonight Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive that spirit, receive it, receive that spirit of prayer, Bonasolami, receive that spirit of prayer, receive it, receive that spirit of prayer. Spoken against every word spoken against, we bring it to naught in the name of Jesus. In the Kaprapadaskanaya, we bundofanaya in the Farikit, in Brakanazo. Bring the people to hold up your hands. Bring the people to hold up your hands. Bring the people to hold up your hands. Bring them, Lord.
hearts of heart. I speak to the hearts of the burnt stones. Holly for trials do come to steal the word. It comes for the word's sake. Whatever has opposed you, whatever you've been persecuted by, whatever you've been offended by, whatever you've been hurt by, it was an assignment. It was strategic to rip the word of God and to literally hope deferred, making the heart sick. But I hear the Lord saying the victory is the Lord's. The victory is the Lord's. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the home. Jesus is in your community. Jesus is in the capital. Jesus is in the state. Jesus is in the nations. And the nations are his. The nations are mine, says the Lord. healing into the hearts that have made your thoughts and emotions confused and I sever the assignment of the enemy of not being clear eyed and not being clear minded oh but the balm oh. the healing power of Jesus the healing balm it's the balm of Gilead it's the balm and the healing power that only he can touch the wound and heal the wound. For the weapons are not carnal. But he is mighty in battle. And the church is mine, says the Lord. And my sheep, they hear my voice. Many of you need to begin to receive the anointing and the call that God has for you right now. Because it's easy to get swept up in these moments and go, okay, instead of receiving what God is imparting to you, this is not common, but it's about to be. You need to receive and take by faith what the Lord is giving you and your household right now. Right now, the Lord has need of you right now right now right now there's an impartation happening there's been spirits of division uh, as Pastor Paul began to prophesy about deliverance will become normal. Uh, that's going to begin to happen. There is a deliverance of families. There's an anointing for that right now. I mean right now. There are demon spirits that try to get between spouses and try to get you to not be in the same alignment um almost like it, it, they create a weird sense of of jealousy from that demon to create uh, a, a separation and i'm telling you the lord is removing that right now of many people right now but you need to take hold of what god has for you gifts are being empowered and supercharged right now you're getting armed you're getting armed Pastor Paul and Karen, wow. we love you. Wow. 